Hello, my name is Trent Mulligan of Avocation Systems, and today we're talking about the basics of audio distribution. Joining me is Richard Reisbick. Richard is an engineering, design, and manufacturing expert who's been involved in the audio video distribution industry for over 24 years now. Welcome, Richard. Great to be here. So, Richard, today we're talking about the proper way to set up and distribute audio. When we talk about audio distribution today, there are three basic scenarios that come up. Can you briefly tell us what those are and what products are needed in each instance? Sure. Well, the first one is where you have many sources to many locations. That's typically done with a matrix routing system. Sure. It allows any source to be heard in any of the zones at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's typically used in sports bars, fitness centers, restaurants, and, and in many homes. Sure. Then you have where you have many sources to one location. And that's typically used in, say, a boardroom or a training center uh, where you have many people needing to speak, but it all goes to a general audience. Then you have uh, distribution amps where you have one source that needs to go to many locations. That's typically used in places such as airports or convention centers, uh, things like that. Okay. Well, in saying that, so dealers are pulling different types of pre-wire to accomplish audio distribution. Can you tell us uh, what they are and talk about the pros and cons of each? Sure. Well, this good old-fashioned coax cable, it may already exist in the location that it's being used. Um, it has a single use, though. You, can, you cannot use it for multiple channels. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult for it to fail. Then you have CAT5 and CAT6, which is typically used when you're using a balanced audio system. It's fairly inexpensive. It can be used for many applications. Uh, there is an added transceiver cost to getting the audio onto the CAT5 and CAT6, and it must be done carefully to prevent electrical noise. All right. Then you have optical fiber, which is uh, moderately inexpensive. It does have an added transceiver cost to it, but it has no electrical noise to the other end. Mm -hmm. It can also include uh, video on that line and control as well. Okay. Then you have power line systems, that actually run the audio through the power line in a home or it's typically not used in commercial. Um, it is fairly new and there is not a lot of data on its failure rate. Well, great, Richard. Thanks for giving us some valuable information regarding the basics of audio distribution. It's been my pleasure. For more information, tips, and expert advice on audio video distribution, check out these sites.